It's no secret that Russia is massive, but how and why did it become the largest country on earth? Back in the 800s, Norsemen who soon became known as the Rus settled here and established the first Russian state. Fast forward to 1050 and Russia grew to this size before it started to decline and then eventually fell to the Mongols in 1237. When the Mongol Empire began to decline, so did Russia's size. It finally broke free of Mongol rule in 1380 and during the next couple centuries, it reunited all the Rus states under one state and began to expand east. Like, really far east. Why? Well, let me show you a map of the Eurasian steppe. Although this land is great for farming, it's notoriously terrible for defense. Luckily, expansion to the Ural Mountains could help alleviate this issue, and so Russia used the Cossacks, a group of skilled horsemen and warriors, alongside the Russian army to conquer and subject the native peoples all the way until they reached the Ural Mountains. They've now plugged up most of their weak points here, and expanding beyond here would mean acquiring land that's extremely cold and horrible for farming. Yet, Russia still kept going east into Siberia for a few major reasons. Siberia was full of fur-bearing animals, and hunters and merchants saw how lucrative coming here could be. The land was sparsely populated, meaning it was easy to conquer, and when they did run into indigenous groups, they subdued and taxed them. But if they didn't comply, military force would be used. In the meantime, Russia started focusing more on its western border. Much like the steppe, the European plain posed a massive security risk, and so expanding into it could not only lead to gaining more power and influence over Europe, but also create a buffer zone between it and the rest of Europe. Early on in the 1600s, Poland had taken a chunk of Russia's land, but fast forward to the 1650s, Poland was in decline and Russia jumped on the opportunity to get its land back plus more. In order to get access to a sea that wouldn't freeze constantly, Russia waged a war on Sweden at the start of the 1700s. Two decades of fighting later, Sweden is exhausted and Russia is the new owner of this land. Nearing the end of the 18th century, Russian expansion started to increase rapidly. With the Ottomans in decline, Russia conquered Crimea in order to gain a presence in the Black Sea. Back in the far, far east, overhunting for fur in Siberia pushed Russia east to Alaska. To protect this border and further dominate the Black and Caspian Seas, Russia took on a decades-long campaign conquering the Caucasus. At the same time, Russia swiftly took Finland from the declining Swedish Empire to create a buffer zone between its capital of the time, St. Petersburg, and Sweden. Prussia and Russia partitioned Poland between one another in 1815, because honestly, that's just tradition at this point. Alaska had been unprofitable for decades now, once again due to overhunting, so Russia sold it to the United States for $7.2 million. Russia expanded it into Central Asia as the region was relatively weak, it was a great place for growing cotton, and as a part of the so-called Great Game against Britain, Russia tried to protect its borders against British India and assert its influence over the area. Now we reach Russia's peak but this isn't what Russia looks like today. So how did it fall and lose a quarter of its territory? Although Russia looks awesome on a map, living there was awful. Russia had severely fallen behind the other great powers of Europe in living conditions, economy, and industry. The Tsar Nicholas II ruled Russia with incompetency and a reluctance to modernize. Growing discontent hit a breaking point when all of these problems culminated in huge losses at the start of World War I. The country became embroiled in a civil war and the Bolsheviks took over the country. By the end of it, Russia had lost quite a lot of land being in such a vulnerable state. World War II allowed Russia to take back much of Eastern Europe and establish satellite states under the Warsaw Pact. The collapse of the Soviet Union left Russia weaker without its buffer states, which is part of the reason Russia invaded Crimea, the Donbass, and Ukraine. A few other reasons include trying to regain influence in the Black Sea, bolster Putin's domestic standing, curb NATO's influence, and fulfill its plan of regaining influence over former Soviet states. This brings us to today, but what I never got around to explaining though is why Russia still miraculously owns this part of the Baltics. Click here to find out why, and thank you to my patrons and to you for watching.